thank you for your interest in a property development update for Hope Church. We appreciate your staying to receive some important information as we anticipate the meeting of our congregation on Sunday, August 2nd at 5 p.m. Before we get into sharing some details, we want to give you an experience of personal testimony by those who have been deeply engaged in this project and are looking forward to its completion. I believe in hope for tomorrow. We believe in hope for tomorrow. I believe in hope for tomorrow. I believe in hope for tomorrow because God's at work in our church. I believe in hope for tomorrow because I see the needs of today. I believe in hope for tomorrow because I've seen it in action more than ever now in these difficult times. I believe in the Hope for Tomorrow campaign because it's an invitation to faith. It's an invitation for our family to say yes to following Jesus. Even though we don't know what exactly is ahead, we love and depend on God. And it is worth saying yes to him every time he invites us. I believe in hope for tomorrow because it helps prepare Hope Church to serve God's people, especially those in our community and the youth, our next generation. And living in Richfield for the last few years, I have seen a growing need for a safe space to gather. Uh, this place to connect and to gather, uh, those, those needs will continue to be here uh, in the future. And as we move out of a season of social distancing and isolation, I believe people are gonna flock to places where they can have face-to-face -face interactions uh, in a safe and positive environment. And so when I think about what could be on 70, first in Portland, I think of a building that is not just a building, but it is a space where community can happen. And hopefully people in Richfield can be there and have a positive experience at Hope and then get plugged into the Hope Church community. Jeff and I hope you have had a safe and healthy summer in these difficult times. We sure do miss you. We wholeheartedly support the Hope for Tomorrow Capital Campaign as a way to renew our church campus. This is a rare opportunity to renew and rejuvenate our aging and inefficient church structure. As a longtime staff member and a person responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of the current 1955, 1962, and 1965 structures, it is essential that we, as a congregation, start this process as soon as possible being good stewards of the property God has blessed us with. We are believers who put our faith in God and follow the Spirit's leading. It's exciting to watch where He's taking us. In the midst of a global pandemic and financial crisis, God's been opening doors for us all along the way, including architectural plans, neighborhood and city support, as well as financing methods. Our ritual campus will be a warm and welcoming place for people of every age, the ones already here and the ones on the way. I believe we have a tremendous opportunity to be good stewards of our property so that the great news of the gospel can continue to be proclaimed in the years ahead. I believe that this project will allow people access to resources that will bring them into relationships that will draw them to understand that they are loved by the God who created them and they have a purpose. In the 50 years that we've attended Hope Church, uh, we've seen all kinds of changes and challenges that God has worked through for us to further His kingdom work at Hope. We were skeptical of the first plan of development, but as changes have been made, we see real potential for the ministry of Hope through the new location of vines and branches and the space for young life and the rental of the school space. Well, we're also really interested and really appreciate the new entryway and the fellowship hall as you enter the church. It's a wonderful place for us to have fellowship with fellow members, have a cup of coffee, uh, and enjoy our time together that we've missed during this time, right, these last months. 
Jeff and I appreciate our commitment, the commitment to the Project Development Committee. They are so committed and so dedicated. We appreciate the great care that they have taken to listen to all of us, to take in our opinions and our thoughts. We are grateful for their vision and their leadership and their teamwork as together we uh, further the hope vision for tomorrow. I think we've learned over the last several months that Hope Church has endured and thrived and flourished for just such a time as this. The opportunities before us are truly infinite. Some we can see now, others will come into view as we continue to follow a good and gracious God. I believe in hope for tomorrow because Jesus is the living hope for the world. And through this project, this great news will continue to be proclaimed for generations. As my daughter Jessica says, it's fun to trust Jesus. It is fun to have faith. It's hard, but it's fun. And isn't it going to be fun when we see God reveal his plan to us that he has had all along? Both of these men, Justin and Brian, have given a great deal to this project and we are very, very grateful to them. So we're going to begin by just setting before you the motion that will be considered on August 2nd. The Property Development Task Force moves that the congregation approve obtaining a mortgage up to $5.5 million secured by our properties for short-term construction financing and long-term funding to supplement the pledges made for rebuilding our church facility. So we're going to be unpacking that and, and sharing some other information about cost. And the first question is going to go to Justin, and it has to do with the overall cost of the project. We've said at seven million dollars. Can you tell us what are we getting for that seven million dollars? To begin with, it's important to point out what the seven million is for and what it is not. The seven million is strictly for rebuilding and remodeling the church facility. This illustration represents the high level line item budget, including contingencies. It does not include the school building. That is a separate but very important part of the project. Brian will go into that later and highlight its role in our annual budget and in our new facility. Furthermore, this budget does not include property development opportunities in the future as we pay down our mortgage on the church. Right now, we are in the pre-construction phase of the project. After getting underway 27 months ago, we have spent $100,000 of Hope for Tomorrow proceeds for a feasibility study in 2018, the preliminary master plan one year ago, the capital campaign last fall, and the final master plan presented in April, tailored to the congregational feedback and the 4.2 million in pledges we've, that have been made. We're preparing now to begin architectural work with Van Man Architects and Builders in September at a cost of $375,000. The next phase is construction, that's when our plans come to life. It rolls up to a total cost of $5.67 million. That includes Van Man's management, demo of our old buildings, new construction and remodeling, all new mechanical, heating, cooling, electrical and plumbing equipment, interior finishes, and all exterior landscaping, lighting and paving. Construction financing follows. There'll be interest costs accumulated during construction of $220,000, plus 
there'll be costs associated with closing the long-term mortgage of $30,000. Post-construction is the final phase. It totals $600,000 to put the finishing touches on our facility and gear up for the moment when we can finally move in. A portion of that amount includes new furniture and additional improvements. Another portion includes two essential elements that would be easy to overlook or trim back if funds run short. Technology is one item that has been growing in importance ever since we started. That budget includes 400,000 for high tech, high quality audio, video, sound, and broadcasting. Marketing and the grand opening are the final piece of this. We're set as setting aside these funds to make the most of the project. They'll be used to promote it, make connections, build awareness, engage the community, and invite them in to come, see, and get involved in what God is doing at Hope Church. Justin, thanks for breaking that down. What I heard you saying is that the project has been designed to solve the challenges that we have been facing as a congregation, and it's also been scaled according to the amount that the people of Hope Church have pledged towards this project. So thanks so much for that. The $7 million refers to what we might call the church side construction, which involves some demolition, some renovation, and some new construction. Meanwhile, the school building has some separate funding sources that we're excited about, and we'll look forward to sharing more about that when the time is right to do that. Well, I want to put the motion back before our people just to note that Justin has just spoken to a $7 million project cost, and yet in the motion we talk about obtaining a mortgage of up to $5.5 million. So I'd like to call upon Brian to explain what does this mean? Thanks, Dave. Uh, as, as you look at the simple math, we can also dig into um, some of the forecast and the operating budgets that we have incurred during the last fiscal year ending August of 2019. We can look at the budget, which is forecast for the year that will begin in two months, and look at the year under construction as well as the, the years following construction. The, uh, the five and a half million, it's important to note, is the maximum construction loan. It's not really anticipated that we would reach that, that peak, uh, but a lot of it has to do with timing. It has to do with the timing of completion of, and fulfillment of the pledges. We are now very close to $2 million received, and the construction period we are anticipating will primarily occur in 2021. If people can give their pledges and accelerate their pledges such that the next million dollars is received in the first half of next year, we could probably save 30 or $40,000 of construction period interest. So that's just one example of that timing. Uh, I think being cautious requires that contingent amount up to 5.5 million. So Brian, just to make sure that we're all understanding, while we're going through this extraordinary process of having a meeting of the congregation under challenging circumstances, we want to make sure that we cap a maximum number so that we wouldn't have to go back if, if for some reason, if we had placed that number too low. But I've also heard you say that it's quite possible we may not need to go that high but this is just to be on the safe side. Have I heard you correctly? Correct. Awesome. And I've heard you also say that some of this is in our hands as we are able to give our gifts at a faster pace. That will bring cost savings. It would mean a, a reduction of the amount that needs to be borrowed if we have more cash in hand. Well, Brian, could you explain a bit more about how it is that the school building plays a key role in servicing the debt that we will take on through construction loan and mortgage. Very good. If we can look at that simplified operating forecast slide, I can 
walk people through it. I don't want to spend too much time. Uh, we will dig into it a little deeper at the annual meeting, so those who like numbers can look forward to that. The, uh, the four years that are shown, the top number is offering, and keep in mind that that is general offering to be used for all church purposes. We have program revenue, which is related to specific programs at the church, and then that third line item of revenue is the Hope Fund Benevolence Receipts. Think of this as being designated gifts. So it's members and friends of Hope that designate their gifts for specific programs and missions. Facility leasing is what I want you to focus on right now. You can see that in fiscal year 2019, that revenue was $193,000. For fiscal year 2020, which will end in two months, we already know that that number will be $394,000. That's a two, nearly a $200,000 increase. And, and as we project out into the years when the school can be used primarily by outside tenants, as the new church is available for us, you can see the, the revenue from leasing rising. Then if you look down, shift down to the expenses, uh, I want you to focus on the facility operating expense of 424000 in 2019, a slight decrease in 2020, and then it, it goes down as we realize some of those efficiencies of a new structure and, and new utilities and uh, mechanical equipment. The capital improvements line is something new in there. Uh, we actually feel that, we strongly believe that uh, as the tenant leasing the rent increases, we will be able to set aside money to do some of those improvements to the school. But the bottom line is our net asset increase for the year that ended last year, that was $65,000. Think of that as cash flow positive. For the year upcoming, or the year just ending now in August, it will be approximately $130,000. And we're projecting that that could increase to $220,000 after construction is complete. And that will be a very important element in making our minimum lease payments, or I'm sorry, our minimum note, long-term note payments in the future. So Brian, it seems to me it's a fairly simple mathematical function that you've just described. On the one hand, we can anticipate increased revenue, primarily through facility leasing, and simultaneously experiencing a decrease in overall expenses. So that leaves us in a stronger cash position year by year. Have I understood you correctly? Yes. Awesome. So we want people to see this plan. We know it, uh, it drives a bit deep in the numbers for some, and others will want to drive still deeper. And we just want to assure you that we're always glad for people who need that more detailed information. We're glad to provide that for you. Well, let's, uh, let's consider together if the congregation should choose to vote yes on authorizing this mortgage. Justin, what will that mean? What does that mean for Hope Church and this project? The project path has had numerous critical milestones along the way. The one immediately before us is the vote to take out a mortgage at next Sunday's annual meeting. Simply put, a yes vote enables us to continue on our projected timeline. Immediately afterward, there are two more critical milestones ahead of us before we can actually get the project underway. First, the city of Richfield needs to approve our plan. Planning and zoning take the matter up tomorrow evening. We expect them to recommend it to the city council for their approval in mid to late August. Second, we need to obtain the necessary credit needed to move the project forward. We've narrowed the list to three lenders. This milestone may prove to be the most challenging of all. While we have encountered incredible favor at every turn, commercial credit is tightening. Loan requirements are becoming stricter. In the long run, however, 
we will do well to assure ourselves and our lenders that we have a viable plan in place for debt repayment and for the future financial well-being of Hope Church. With credit approvals in October, architecture, permitting, bidding, and selecting subcontractors will run through January of next year. Groundbreaking will take place next March. Construction will take place over the course of 12 months. And God willing, we'll move in and celebrate all that God has done in March of 2022. Thank you, Justin, for lining that out for us. It's very exciting to think about what could be happening. And we do indeed seek the Lord's favor on all that is unfolding. We want you to be aware that you can view past presentations about property development updates. We think you could find them very helpful. You simply go to the HOPE website, and then hit forward slash property dash development. We also want you to feel all the freedom in the world of asking any question that you might have. Uh, the easiest way to do it is just to email property at hope-pc.org and we try to get back to you as fast as we can. Or Justin is happy to take your phone calls. No solicitations, but he's happy to take your phone calls um, at, at his number, 651-247-3707. We do, again, want to remind you that because of the challenge of holding a meeting of the congregation in this exceptional season, we want you, please, to RSVP your intention to participate in the meeting. If you are a covenant partner or member of Hope Church, would you please email Cindy Forsgren, cindy at hope-pc.org, or call the church number 612-866-4055, and you can help us ensure that we will have a quorum. So I want to thank Brian and Justin for giving us these updates. They made it look easy, but a lot went into what they just shared. And I want to praise God from whom all blessings flow. Brian, you know, we actually crossed that $2 million threshold late last week, and we have now received... For Hope for Tomorrow, $2,015,000 and a little bit more. It's so exciting to see how these resources keep coming in. And we want you to know, the leaders of Hope Church, that your faithfulness under these extraordinary circumstances is nothing less than astonishing to us. So we say, wow, a sanctified wow to God be the glory. As you can see by the carefully prepared charts, we are counting the cost of this project. That's what Jesus tells us to do. Count the cost. We're doing that as carefully as we know how to do. Time and again, as this project has proceeded, we have asked the Lord for wisdom, just as James directs us to do. But let us shout this from the rooftops. We are stepping out in faith. It's a bit scary, but it's also exhilarating. Can you feel it? We get to share in this great moment in the history of Hope Church. As previous generations at Hope Church did, we are daring something great, reaching far beyond what would have been easy to do. This does take great faith. As it says in Hebrews 11:6, without faith it is impossible to please God. So we are summoning great faith for this moment. We're doing this because we want to create something of lasting and wonderful beauty for the Lord, for his purposes, for his kingdom ministry. 
Our renewed facility will be a great joy for us, the ones who are already here. But even more importantly, it will serve the ones on the way for generations to come. We are making this extraordinary commitment for ones we don't know so that they might know how good it is as we know how good it is to trust Jesus as Lord and Savior. Let us ask the Lord. Let us ask the Lord to send the ones on the way by the dozens and by the hundreds and by the thousands as this new facility we are hoping to create will be a bright beacon in this community and in this metro area for generations to come. We want the Lord's name to be glorified, for truly there is no other name under heaven by which we are saved. The crucial next step is the vote of the congregation on August 2nd. The project is now in your hands. May the Lord bless us in our discerning. May the Lord watch over our going out and our coming in. Thanks for being a part of this update. Amen, amen. and amen. amen.